Hello everyone, this is Jay Harder and I'm going to talk to you today about machine learning and how we might do that in Alteryx. So one thing I uh, found is a website called Kaggle.com. I'm just going to go there and show you um, something that might be of interest. So I was looking for a very basic data set that I could apply some machine learning techniques to. Um, so we can see here on Kaggle that we have um, kind of this competition, if you will. Um, you, the idea is they're going to give you a training set of all of the passengers uh, that were on the Titanic and a variety of attributes, such as their age, their sex, whether they um, survived or not, and uh, you know how much they paid for their ticket, whether they were first, second, or third class. And then you can train your model to predict whether they uh, would have survived or not, and then use that against a test uh, sample to, and see how close you get. All right, so there's just a couple things if you've never been to this site before. Uh, you can go and uh, grab the data here. Uh, so if you want to download the data, you just um, you could click here and you can download it. There's some additional information about the data um, here. If you just click um, on this, you'll get more information. So these are the, the names of the fields, and then it explains what that is. So P class is the first, second, or third class. Um, some of these that might not be as obvious, like P-A-R-C-H is the number of parents and children aboard the Titanic, number of siblings, etc. So take a look at that if you're interested. Um, I've already downloaded this information, and then when you're ready, you just click on Submit Predictions, and they're looking for the uh, responses in just two columns, the passenger ID and zero for um, did not survive and one for survived. So we'll take a look at how we might handle that in Alteryx. So I'm going to switch over to Alteryx now, and I'm going to bring those two uh, data sets in. Okay, so I pulled them in here. The training model, that's how we're going to train our model. <clears throat> the test is what we're going to use after we're all done and apply that to the model that we created to see how close we can get. We don't, so in other words, in this training model, we know who survived and who didn't. They tell us that answer. Okay, zero means they didn't, one means they survived. In the test model, there is no survival field, uh, survived field, it's, it's only the other attributes. All right, so what we can do is we can go to this machine learning tab. Now you have to have the intelligence suite to have access to these tools, so if you don't have that, um, you know, you'll need a license for that or at least a, an evaluation license. I'm gonna bring in the assisted modeling uh, tool and attach it to my training uh, data set. Now you don't see much of a configuration here because you have to run the model first. So I'm gonna run that. We have this information now. It looks the same, but now I'm gonna click on Start Assisted Modeling. It takes a few minutes, but it kind of goes through um, some basics on machine learning, like whether you need a classification model or a regression model. Uh, I'm just going to click on start building and what are what is our target what are we trying to solve for well we're trying to solve for survived and it already sort of guesses that hey this sounds like a, a classification model based on the data type and the fact that it's zeros and ones uh, and they are correct so we're good to go there now we just click on next uh, and it's just giving you a warning that hey you can't go back if you do this that's fine uh, now you can collect, select your automation level, whether you want it to be automatic or step-by-step. -step. I kind of like step-by-step, -step, especially if you're just getting into machine learning. It kind of gives you almost like a, a tutorial on machine learning. So let's go through that. Uh, so here, they're just giving you, they're just telling you, hey, we're going to um, call the certain, certain fields categorical and some numerical. And I'm just going to stick with all their recommendations. Only thing I'm going to change is... Uh, passenger ID, I'm going to change that to ID. Um, although when I do that, it says feature will be dropped. Uh, so maybe I'll go with their recommendation here. Uh, and I'll, that's fine. Ticket ID, they're going to drop that and they're going to drop name and cabin. That's okay. I'm going to hit next. And then inevitably, you may have some, um, some data quality issues or some missing data. Uh, so they're identifying that 
we have some missing data here. This one has quite a bit of missing data. So 177 missing uh, records for age, um, missing the age value in the record, I should say. And it's suggesting that we replace it with the median um, as opposed to, say, like the mean. And that's fine. And, and bar to replace with a constant. So it's just basically going to create a new field um, for those two records that don't have embarked. Embarked is just telling you where it embarked from, what, um, what port em it embarked from. And I, I'm okay with those two. So I'm going to hit next. And it's letting us know that it thinks these, all these fields are good predictors. And by the way, you can click on each one and you can get like a preview over here. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of fly through this and hit next. And it's letting us know which models it thinks we could use. Um, I'm going to pick all four of them and, and just see what happens. So let's run it. And it's going to go through and run all four models. And it's giving you an accuracy. Basically, it's saying, hey, let's pretend like we don't know who survived. And if we use these attributes, um, we're 81% accurate if we use random forest. So that's the, that's the winner here, um, and so on. So you can, you can check those and basically add them to your workflow. Uh, so in essence, what you're doing here is you're creating all of the work behind the scenes, and then you're saying, okay, now that I've done that, go ahead and add it so, um, so I can use it with my test data. So we'll add all four of those to the workflow. Random Forest, Logistic Regression, XGBoost. Um, it didn't do the fourth one for some reason. I'm not sure why, but let's go with three, these three. Um, and then the, we're getting some red exclamation points here because we didn't attach the test data. So this is the, where you want to put your test data here to, um, to get your predicted values. So let's go back over to our test. Remember, this is the one that doesn't have survived in it. And sometimes it does take a little while when you're using these tools because there's a lot of uh, processing going on. I'm going to, I would connect it to all of these, but I'm going to show you something first before I do that. Uh, when I run this, we are going to get an error. And it tells you what's going on here. It says scoring the model failed because we have NAN, not a number. Um, and it's due to null values. So basically, when we went through this, we cleaned up missing values by replacing with the median or what have you. In this case, um, I have to do the same thing. And I'm not going to use these same tools because these are like machine learning tools and I'd have to create a model and everything. I'm just going to do it a slightly simpler way. Um, first of all, anytime you have a CSV, everything is text. So I want to make sure that these fields are a little bit more accurate. So I'm going to make them I'm going to use the auto number, or sorry, the auto field tool and um, convert all these fields to what Alteryx thinks it should be. And then after that, I'm going to use the uh, imputation tool. And that, in essence, acts like that clean up missing values um, for whatever we select. So in the configuration window, um, let's see. We don't see anything, but I think I'd have to run the model first so it auto field can change the field types. Let's just do that. So now when I click on the imputation uh, configuration, I can, I can select certain fields to impute. And I know age is an issue uh, like it was before. Um, and in this case, in the test data, there is a few um, values that don't have a fair in them. So I'm going to choose fair. And I'm going to say, hey, anytime you see a null, I want to choose medium because that's what we cho chose um, in the, uh, the training data set. And I'm not going to include an indicator that it's imputed. Um, I'm not going to output a separate field as the imputed value. I'm just going to over, you know, put it in that same column. So now let's just run this before I go through the process of changing things uh, for all, 
all of the other models just to make sure it works. And since we already ran it for this one, we can see what we're getting. We are getting the results we had before, but now we're getting a survived predicted result. Uh, and actually we're getting three fields for survived. It's got more of a probability number and what its final prediction is, a zero or one. Um, all we really need is the survive field and the passenger ID. So let's just do that. Um, we'll use the select tool just to select only the fields we need. Uh, we need passenger ID. I'm going to deselect all. Passenger ID and survived. It has to be named survived. So I'm going to change that name. And then I also need to output that to a CSV so I have something to sort of upload into that Kaggle website. So I'm going to output the data uh, to a CSV and I'm going to output that as random forest. So I'm just going to call it RF predictions. And I just like to make these relative uh, paths. So I'm just going to say dot just means it's the same path as where this workflow is stored. And then look in, look into this folder once you get to that path. Uh, see if that works. It probably will. Okay, so that's fine. And then just to save some time, I'm going to copy these two and paste them here. And I just need to change the file names. And let's run it. Control R. Okay, so we have our predictions now. Um, they're sitting in my folder. Here, what I have, RF, LR, XG. This was an old one, um, so we're not going to use that one. And now let me go back to that website, and I'll hit Submit Predictions. Uh, and I will just drag one of these. I don't know which one, just LR is fine. And then it says describe your submission. I could say linear regression. I could type in more stuff if I wanted to, but that's fine. I'm just going to say make submission, and let's see what we get. 76.3%, and that puts me at, well, this was my best entry. Um, and so it must have been a different model, uh, what have you. But I'm at 76.3%. Let's just submit another one. Uh, so that was linear regression. Uh, the one that suggested it would be the best was a random forest, I believe. So let's see if that one is any better. Random forest. Okay, there it goes. So that one's a little bit better. 77.9. Uh, Still not as good as this one. I forget which one that one was, but let's do the third one. So we had linear, we did random. Let's try the XG. So submit predictions again and XG. I'll just say XG here. Pending 77. That's let me see my submissions. Okay, so I okay, so I had done a few things here. I put a little more descriptive um, information here on this one, but um, yeah. So you can see how easy it is, though, or at least how fast it is to create a machine learning model and then take your training data and and apply that same model uh, in Alteryx. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, probably quite a bit faster than, you know, if you know Python and you went through and and did all of this work, um, it would it would take quite a bit longer, obviously. So um, interested to know your comments. If you uh, you know 
if you want to try this and you, you, you get something better than that 78%, let me know what you did. I'm curious if there were certain um, attributes that you dropped or a different way you thought about it uh, than kind of the default way that, uh, that I did it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.